Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper. Glad to be with you for this week's brand spank, a new edition of Takedown. Well, for the first time in 18 years, the U.S. has a junior Greco-Roman world champ. In what might have been the most thrilling match of the tournament, Kamal Bay took out junior Asian champ Axel Makomedov in the 74-kilo finals. The two traded step-outs in the opening seconds, and then Bay hit a big four-point throw to go up 5-1. Makomedov answered with a reversal, but the American kept up the pressure, scoring five more in a late first-period flurry going up 11-6. Now, Makhmadov came clawing back in the second, but a late counter throw and a failed corner challenge gave Bay the 16-11 victory and a junior world title. World champion Kamal Bay. Crazy match. Take us through that. Uh, shoot, I came into the match like I do any match. You know, ready to go. Good sweat going. Hearts pumping for it. But, you know, you wrestled a good, I wrestled a good competition that match. I really wrestled another me out there because it was just letting but lock up and go for both of us. And he had them into the dragon arms. You know, every time I thought I cleared the underhook, he was right back in. You know, there was times where I felt like I was on the ropes. But luckily, I'm like a cat, man. So, I, you know, I landed on my feet. How does it feel? You got the belt you were talking about. If, I don't know you. I don't have it yet. Okay, but <laughs> you want it. The, ceremony, the feel? ceremony ain't here, man. There's a belt right there. I want to go take it. <laughs> uh, feel great. You know, this is something I've been training for. You know, it, it's almost like it came full circle from last year, you know, taking eighth place uh, here. And then... Uh, <laughs> All right, I'm back. Uh, taking eighth place and then uh, coming back and winning first. Uh, I'm just happy I got the people I do around me. Like, we're really going to enjoy this victory tonight. Not just for me, but for Greco-Roman wrestling as a whole in the country. Joining Bay in the Junior World Finals, American Sevian Severado met up with cadet world champ Poya Mars. The Missouri native was unable to score against the heavily favored Iranian, while Mars scored six points on two takedowns and a pair of push-outs. Though he finished in second, Severado became the first U.S. Greco wrestler in 17 years to reach the Junior World Finals. What did you learn about yourself from uh, the beginning of the day to the end? Um, you know, I, as good as I am, I still have lots to learn. I'm still fresh with the, with the whole Greco style. And um, the more I do it, the more I think, um, I know I'll get better. And uh, uh, I think it's nice to know that I still have lots of room to improve. And um, I think Coach Rob will take care of that. So uh, uh, I'm interested to see how I'll do next year. 2016 Junior World Bronze Medalist Taylor Lamont placed fifth in Finland, dropping a hard-fought 2-1 decision to Russian Magomedov in the third-place bout. Giangelo Hancock also wrestled on Saturday, placing seventh at 96 kilos. The U.S. was unable to reach the medal round on day two as returning Junior World team member Randon Miranda dropped a controversial 6-5 decision in the opening round at 55. Dominic Damas, Wyatt Kaling, and Colton Schultz were also eliminated in the first round of competition, and the U.S. finished fourth behind Turkey, Russia, and Iran. Talk about the uh, U.S. performance overall as a Greco program. Your final thoughts? Well, obviously, day one is is what we were looking for, and that's that's what we want to get to. And 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 we weren't even satisfied with day one. Obviously, we wanted more, and we felt we we, we could get more. And so. Uh, that's where, where we're heading, and that's where we'll redouble efforts, as we say, and, and go and, and look at those things that worked. And hopefully that will be that igniter for us to, to make that next step. And, and you know, we're not, we're not going to forget about today. We're going we're gonna to use today as, as, a, as, a, as a firing rod. We'll have more from the Junior World Championships after this short timeout. You're watching Takedown. Thanks to Casey's General Stores. Casey's famous for pizza. This month at Casey's General Stores, try out our limited time only Philly cheesesteak pizza. And don't forget about our monthly pizza special. Two large single topping pizzas for just $20. Casey's, famous for pizza. I'm Don Beneveni, Beneveni Chevrolet and Granger. We recently made the switch to uh, LED lighting. Uh, we purchased it from uh, Yellow Blue. Uh, we've had a very good experience. The lighting has saved us approximately $1,000 a month. I made the switch to Yellow Blue LED lighting, and you should too.
All right, welcome back to Takedown. Prior to the women's freestyle action at the Junior Worlds, former wrestler and Guardian of the Galaxy star Chris Pratt sent out a very special message to our junior women's team. Let's take a look. Hey, Coach Barnes. Chris Pratt here. I'm out on San Juan Island. Ooh, it's so pretty here. I just wanted to make a, a special video and a special message to uh, your world team, to the girls over there. I hope that this finds you well. Um, I just want to say I'm so proud of all of you for accomplishing what you've accomplished to get to where you are right now. That's, an, that's amazing. You are competing at a world level that's, that's just so ridiculous. And I don't, even, I don't know you, but I'm just I'm proud of you. And I have known Brent Barnes, Coach Barnes, my entire life, and I love him dearly. I know you're in good hands. I'm going to tell you some keys to international competition that, that no one else is going to tell you. Brent's not going to tell you this. But here's what it comes down to. You gotta get dirty. You gotta headbutt, thumb in the eye, do a little thumb in the eye. Blinding powder. If you can find blinding powder tablets, keep them in your singlet, crunch them up. Ah, they go blind, they go blind, double leg. That's that's how I got fifth in state. I used a lot of a lot of blinding powders. Um mini weaponry. And lastly, uh, voodoo curses. I, I used a lot of voodoo curses wrestling. Um, you're in Finland, I believe. You could probably find a witch or Wiccan there to do some disabling spells on your opponents. Uh, and last, I would say, just enjoy yourselves. Have fun. You're making lifelong memories, and you've already accomplished so much. Uh, I know you've got a lot more to accomplish, and the pressure's on for you to go there and compete and I'll, I'm thinking about you and I hope that you, I hope that you you uh, kick ass each and every one of you and uh, just remember it's about the journey and you're on one hell of a journey so take like 30 seconds to stop and smell the roses because you're you're doing something that very very few people on the entire planet get to do so keep it up wrestle hard ladies and uh, much love with only three years of wrestling experience, no blinding powder or voodoo, American Asia Ray bullied her way through the 44 kilo field and won a bronze medal. Ray faced Canada's Pan Am champ, Alexia Seal, in the first match of the evening and got a go-behind takedown to lead 2-0 at the break. Ray scored on a Seal shot attempt in the second and hit a takedown and an arm drag to go up six. Seconds later, the Canadian ran through a double leg, but it was not enough as Ray countered with a four-point throw and took the match 10-2. Junior World Bronze Medalist Asia Ray. How does that sound? You just I did it on my first try. Yeah, I know. I was really excited. I was scared when I first came in. But now that I feel like I really deserve to be here. And I'm excited. Yeah, I'm ready for next year. I'm trying to win next year. <laughs> what will this do for you going ahead, going forward? It's going to give me a lot of confidence. Now I'm fixing to go to college. And I was worried that I wouldn't be you know, at the same level as the college girls. But competing in this tournament and actually placing just gave me a lot of confidence that I'll be able to keep up with those college girls. What was going through your head before you wrestled that match? Um, I was thinking that she knows I'm a double. Um, her coaches were probably telling her to, you know, tie me up so I can't get the double on there. And I was excited to show them that that's not all I have. Um, I didn't score not one double. I scored from other positions, so I was excited. You had a great day. All of your wins were pretty dominant. Can you just talk about how you, what you thought of your performance overall? I think I did really great, and I can't just, like, you know, put it on myself. It was my coaches. They gave me the confidence. When I came here, like I said, I didn't have much confidence, but they continued to talk to me and told me that I'm worth it, that I deserve to be here. And having them talk to me all, every day and tell me that I'm good enough and practice with me and show me the things that I need to do better and the things that I already do good but perfect, it made me you know, really confident and it helped me really a lot. Washington's Cameron Gurren wrapped up her first Junior World Championship with a fifth place finish at 51 kilos, and Gracie Figueroa and Alex Glaude both finished 1-1, giving the U.S. just one medal through four weights. We'll take you through the final day of competition after this short timeout. You're watching Takedown. Thanks to McBride Max. This month at Casey's General Stores, try out our limited time only Philly cheesesteak pizza. And don't forget about our monthly pizza special. Two large single topping pizzas for just $20. Casey's, famous for pizza.
Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookies is the one. What's up guys, I want to tell you about a new product that I am extremely excited about. It is the Pure and Clean Sports Skin Defense. It comes in a 16 ounce spray bottle and it comes in a little bitty travel size spray bottles. I have one of these, throw it in my bag, go straight to the gym. A lot of these gyms I train at, whether it be boxing, wrestling, kickboxing, grappling, strength and conditioning, it all has bacteria floating around, they all have viruses floating around, they all have fungus floating around, and the last thing you want is to get a fungus, a virus, get sick, any kind of um, any kind of wounds that are going to turn into any kind of uh, skin infections to take you off of the mat. Every single second that you spend off the mat or out of the gym is one second that you're wasting. So, Pure and Clean Sports came up with a amazing solution to give you the right amount of protection on your skin. You spray it right on your skin. Stay pure, stay clean. Checking them out. PureandCleanSports.com. Welcome back to our recap of the Junior World Championships. Our coverage continues with the second day of women's freestyle action. That's where Colorado's Maya Nelson teched junior Asian bronze medalist Zing Zhan and then pin Canadian Pan Am champ Nicole Deppa. In the semis, she shut out Kutsanova of Russia and advanced to the 60 kilo finals to face the Bulgarian Yaniva. Nelson scored the first points on a leg attack and held a two-point lead at the break. Maya continued to press the action in the second, and she hit a reshot near the edge of the mat and then put the Bulgarian on her back to seal the 6-0 victory and her first world championship. Maya yes. Nelson, world champion. Congratulations, how are you feeling? I am elated. <laughs> I am so happy right now. And like first and foremost, like all the glory goes to God. And it, without him, without my faith, I would not be here, so. Your day starts with tears, it ends with tears. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a big baby, it's okay. <laughs> you can be a big baby as long as you work hard, am I right? <laughs> you mentioned earlier um, how nervous you were, how the emotions were kind of getting to you before. How were you before this match? Still nervous, <laughs> still nervous. I, I get nervous and I think it's more excitement than nervousness now that I'm like starting to just get my mojo into, I mean, I've been wrestling for a while, but I mean, I've always had that feeling and I always related it with nervousness. I always related it with something negative. And I think in this match, I was just like, that's not nervousness, that is, that is excitement. And I can do this and I'm going to do this and I'm not stepping off that mat until I am a world champion. <laughs> now you've done it, what do you think? I want more. <laughs> <laughs> Michaela Campbell, Rona Heaton, and Rachel Waters also represented the U.S. Friday, but were unable to reach the medal rounds. Heaton and Waters each finished 1-1, while Campbell was eliminated in the opening round at 48. Now with a pair of medals and 29 points, the U.S. took fifth behind Ukraine, China, Russia, and the team champions from Japan. Junior Women World Team coach Aaron Vandiver, Maya won a gold medal, Asia won a bronze medal. Talk about this team effort overall. Um, very exciting, great effort overall. The team, um, they say positive, they were very encouraging and motivating. I know we had some ups and downs, and even the girls that were down just stayed positive for those girls that were still in it, and they really built each other up over camp. They got to know each other, it became a family, and uh, it was pretty unique to see. I know we didn't come out with everything that we wanted, but they learned a lot, and this is a young group, and they just really support each other and were there for each other. So the effort as a team was awesome. Maya was our first, is our first junior world champ since 2010. What does yeah, that mean for our women's program that's coming up? 
Um, it just goes to show the you know the system in place and the process involved that she's been through the USA Wrestling system, the development system as a cadet, as a junior. Now it's just all coming together. The time's right, and she's making those strides and separating herself from the rest of the crowd and just uh, really focusing on that process. And I think it's just a testimony to the the pieces that are in place, the coaches, the staff, and the system that's in place that can really do a lot to benefit these athletes and get them where they need to be to have success on the world stage. You've been around Maya for a while. She's an OTC resident athlete. How have you seen her grow? Uh, tremendously. You know, as from a cadet and just, uh, she's always had that, that grit and that grind and that fight in her, but just really slowing things down and backing things um, off a little bit to really focus on the fine details. And again, she just has focused on the process tremendously. I can't, you know, commend her enough and speak for that uh, too highly because she has really, uh, again, had some ups and downs and has been very close to a lot of success. Um, and it's just come up, you know, shorthanded a lot. And but she has had some great uh, perseverance and seeing through those downs and, and working hard and staying positive. And uh, yeah, her maturity level just on and off the mat as a person, as a wrestler, has just grown tremendously. And I'm so excited and happy for her. For the first time in history, the U.S. finished with a world champ in all three styles as Dayton Fix, Mark Hall, Gable Stevenson, Maya Nelson, and Kamal Bay all won gold. Congratulations to all of our athletes and coaches on 11 medal performance in Finland. Stick around, you're watching Takedown Thanks to Nike Wrestling. The war raged for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built. Welcome back to Takedown. The National Wrestling Hall of Fame's summer documentary series continues with a look at the life of 2017 Medal of Courage recipient Tom Green. I was born in um, Wheatsport, New York. That's basically where I was raised. And um, both my parents were middle class people. We had a little uh, hobby farm on the side, so we were always busy doing something. Um, I think my parents instilled a uh, great work ethic uh, through me and my brothers and my sister. Started wrestling in seventh grade. My father really encouraged me to wrestle and my older brothers wrestled also. Um, as a junior and senior in high school, I made it to the sectional quarterfinals twice. As a junior college wrestler, I made it to the nationals and I was one match from being an All-American, and then I moved on to Cortland State where I placed twice in the Intercollegiate State Championships. And uh, my senior year, I was ranked fourth in the nation before I got hurt. Before, before the accident, I worked for Bristol Myers Squibb. Uh, I was a chemical operator there. When all this happened, my wife was, uh, she's a school teacher still, she's not, at uh, Southern Cuga. Central Schools. She's a phys ed teacher there. The accident happened when I was at work. Um, I was working a 
overtime and there was a pipeline explosion and I was burnt with uh, potassium hydroxide. From there I went to uh, the hospital, spent approximately four days and when I left the hospital I was uh, basically blind. We went through a series of surgeries to get my uh, vision corrected. Um, I've had over 40, 40 surgeries now, five or six corneal transplants. I've had um, a conjunctiva transplant from my brother to me. My brother Gary donated part of his conjunctiva. I've had uh, synthetic cornea put in. Uh, they've done retinal work. I've had a stent put in my eye twice, or, and I've got, I'm scheduled for more surgeries now because my uh, outside layer of my eye is thinning and I've got scar tissue on the inside that's blocking the pressure. I've had a mouth release. Like when the accident first happened, my mouth healed together. Uh, I couldn't even fit my thumb in my mouth. It was so tight. It's just, it's just been... It seems like about every three years I'm due for a surgery. Uh, the recovery, each one was a little different. Some took a lot longer than others. Some were very short and easy, but it was tough. Uh, my wife was a trooper through all this. My family's probably one of the biggest things in my life. Um, I, I honestly don't know what I would do without them. They pick on me a lot and stuff, and which that means I know they love me. And uh, it's just, they're always there for you no matter how down you get or how bad you're feeling or how good you're feeling, they're always there. And I think that's what family's supposed to be like. And I've been very fortunate and very blessed to have such a great family. I got into coaching because of the accident. Um, the, the local school was looking for a coach and the guy that was gonna coach him didn't have a lot of experience and he knew me and he came over and asked me if I would help out. I told him I could only do it as a volunteer because of all the, the situation I was in. And that, ha that started, that was 19 years ago that started. And I've been coaching ever since at the same school, either as a volunteer or as a head coach. I've been the head coach now. This is my uh, 11th season as a head coach. And I volunteered for the first eight. His passion for wrestling and his commitment to the kids here at Port Byron, he's been able to overcome um, the, the problem with his sight. And he's compassionate uh, about his wrestlers. Uh, he, he'd do anything for them, including spending his own money to, you know, to send them to camp or any, uh, any uh, summer tournaments. He spends his own money, uh, not sponsored by the school. So I, he's very, very com uh, committed to the sport of wrestling. Uh, uh, here at Port Byron. I think the referees didn't like my visual handicap because I was close to the mat an awful lot because I couldn't see the wrestlers. Uh, the frustration of not really seeing what the kids were doing and then getting them off to the side and then explaining to them what the, how to, what the moves were and stuff was probably the biggest part to overcome. I tell the kids, no matter how bad something is, it can always get worse or it can always get better, depending on how hard you want to work. I uh, give myself an example sometimes. There's always, you can always move on and you can always continue to get better, no matter what situation you're in. I could have told them I could be just sitting home, laying around and doing nothing. I didn't have to come down here and coach, but I wanted to coach because I thought I had something to give back to wrestling. The, kid, the kids are the best part of the whole thing. They, they understand, they, they, and they, they come and they, they listen to you. The, the things that uh, he's been able to achieve with this particular handicap is, is unbelievable. I think Tom Green is an inspiration to everyone dealing with wrestling. Uh, it's a, a, a wonderful story about how someone overcame a lot of challenges and obstacles in his life and use wrestling as a mechanism to do this. 
Be sure to visit the National Wrestling Hall of Fame and Museum on Facebook for dozens of documentaries and other great features on our sport. Special thanks to the National Wrestling Hall, Richard Emmel, Gary Abbott, and our friends at USA Wrestling. And as always, you can find all the wrestling news, interviews, weekly prizes, and the longest-running radio show in the sport absolutely free. It's all at TakedownWrestle.com. Until next time, I'm Scott Casper. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.